Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to talk about how you can use Asana to plan annual, monthly, uh, weekly and even daily goals and tasks that you are working on. This is one of the things that I think Asana is really good at, it is, is that it's not just a task management or a project management tool, which is more of that granular day-to-day -day type of planning. It's actually very good at planning sort of more holistically, the bigger strategy, the vision, the long-term view uh, of your business or your team. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, then please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you do want more one-on-one -on -one help with Asana, then check out the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options and uh, training packages. Let's get into this video and let's start by talking about the big picture planning because when we're planning, typically we start with the big picture, the sort of end goal in mind. So how can Asana help us to plan the big picture? Well, firstly, the most kind of uh, straightforward feature that we have to do that is to use the goals feature here in Asana. Now this does require you to be on the business subscription. And if you are, you can then create goals either for your company or for specific teams in your account. Now, I'm just using my demo account, so I actually only have one team here. But if you have multiple teams set up in your organization, you can actually allocate different goals to different teams. So let me show you a couple of examples. I have one down here, which is to increase monthly signups to 20,000 per month. And so that's the name of my goal. You can see what I've got here is a goal metric. So I'm at uh, 15,000 right now. I need to get to 20, so I'm about 67% of the way there. I've got a, a brief description of my goal, and I can even break this down into sub goals. So this is where we can sort of take that big, big target that we're trying to uh, accomplish and break that down into some smaller steps that we can actually try and take action towards. So to increase signups, maybe one of the things I can do is increase my sales final conversion rate. And something else I can do is increase my landing page conversion rate as well. So similar there. Each goal can be assigned to a particular person or a team and can obviously have some kind of due date in mind as well. And one of the really cool things we can do with goals is link them to supporting work. So over here, you can see this goal. This is just an example, but I've related, uh, linked it to the new product launch project. And so this is a really nice way that Asana helps you to bridge that gap between the goal that you're working on and the project that you are working on currently, day to day or over the current, uh, you know, coming weeks and months. So it really helps you to link that work and really see how the work that you're doing uh, informs and is helping you towards your, your big picture. So as well as the goal planning feature, we also have in the portfolio view, uh, here's an example of a client portfolio. So each of these that we're looking at here, these are each uh, uh, projects. And so on the left-hand side, you can actually see Apple, Amazon, Tesla, and SpaceX. Those are the projects that I've added to this portfolio. So a portfolio is basically kind of like a, a dashboard that shows me the status of multiple projects. So I can look at each of my clients in this example and see how many overdue tasks I have. I can see the status of those projects, whether the project is at risk or on track, and I can even see things like the percentage completion. Now, in terms of how this helps us to kind of plan uh, the big picture, we actually have this timeline view. And if I zoom out a little bit, let's zoom out to the year, I can see when each of these projects starts and finishes. So I can see Microsoft sort of started around January. We had a Apple starting in April, you know, going to be completed in December. SpaceX started in May, completed in December, and so on. And I can even see the milestones related to that goal. So this is a really useful view. This portfolio timeline really helps me to see what do I have coming up over the next few months, or basically it could even be the next few years. If I scrolled sideways, I could do multi-year planning in this portfolio view. And as you can see, it's very visual. Um, by laying it out horizontally, I can see when different projects start and finish. And one of the things my clients ask me all the time is, how can we forecast our capacity? If we want to do more work or take on more projects, how can we forecast and see how much we can handle? Well, I think the portfolio view here is one of the really useful ways you can see what you have coming up and then you can work out where you have availability uh, coming up in the future. So the goals feature that I showed you before and this portfolio uh, timeline here, these I think are the two best features that we have in Asana for doing that kind of annual or even multi-year type of planning in Asana. 
So what about quarterly or monthly planning? Well, equally, I mean, this portfolio view here depends how far out you plan, I suppose, but this portfolio view is one really useful way we can see what's coming up over the coming weeks or quarters, depending on how far out you're planning. We also have the workload uh, feature, which is also part of the portfolios section. So here in the workload, we can see what is my team specifically have coming up over the next few weeks or, or, or months. And uh, this is sort of a little bit dependent on you being proactive in terms of scheduling out the projects that you have coming up, estimating hours and uh, assigning tasks to individuals on the team. And uh, you've got, there are other videos on my YouTube channel. I also have my Master Asana online course, which goes into a lot more detail on this kind of thing if you do want to learn about things like workload. But what we can see here is, um, for example, Jarvis here, this contractor on the team, he's actually overloaded. He's got this red warning here showing he has too much work to do at this at this this uh, over this weekend. Um, if I just collapse that, he's obviously got a bit of availability here and uh, over the next couple of weeks, and then he has a busy week coming up here. Paul, myself, you know, I'm quite consistent. I've just sort of got pretty consistent work each week. Um, same with Elon Musk. So I can kind of look forward a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months ahead, and I can see how busy myself or my, my team members are based on the work that we've planned out and the estimated hours that we've allocated to those tasks. You can, of course, go into each individual project as well. So where the portfolio timeline before, if I just go back to that quickly, this is showing you the due date for the entire project, and it's showing you milestones for each of those projects. So it's not an entire, completely detailed view. Instead, if I drill down into a project like this new product launch, I have a timeline specific to this one project. So not only do I see the duration of the entire project and the milestones, I can also see my tasks in here as well. So here's an example of a task that's taking um, you know, a couple of, or about a month or so to complete. So I get an extra layer of detail in the timeline view of each specific project as well. So that I think is more useful when you're kind of looking ahead over the coming weeks or coming month or so, um, is drilling down into each of the specific project timelines where you just get an extra layer of detail. You've also got the calendar view here. So this is a nice useful way of just seeing kind of a month at a glance. What do I have coming up for this particular project? And I can scroll down and see, yeah, just the tasks that I have coming up. The calendar view makes it also very quick and easy to move things around if I want to as well. So if I want to grab um, one of these tasks, I could, I could change it. I can just kind of drag things around. So editing my timeline and my dates is really quick and easy to do there in the calendar view. Now, when it comes to planning your time on a daily or sort of weekly basis, you know, the sort of most granular way we can plan our time is, you know, what do I have coming up today, tomorrow, this week? I definitely think the best place to do that is with the My Tasks. So here's an example of my tasks. This is actually from my live account now. And you can see I've organized my tasks into what do I have coming up today? And I can see I'm recording videos today. I've got my podcast to record. And if I go down, I've got a section here for what I've got coming up this week as well. And so I can basically get a really quick snapshot of what do I have coming up across all of my projects for the coming week. Just like I did with the project calendar, I actually have a calendar here in my tasks as well. Um, if I do want to look at kind of a month, actually the way I have my tasks set up with lots of date ranges, this isn't the clearest view um, for me at the moment. Oh, if, I, if I scroll down there, we can see there's a, a little bit, bit more clarity there, but you've got that calendar view on your my tasks as well. And so when you're working in Asana, depending on what kind of planning mode you're in, if you're doing big picture, long-term planning, you're going to be more likely to use the goals and the portfolios. If you're doing that sort of medium term, monthly, quarterly planning, portfolios and project timelines are particularly useful. But on a daily, day, uh, but on a daily basis, uh, when planning your, day, your tasks for today, tomorrow, this week, the My Tasks view is where you're definitely going to be spending most of your time. Now, one final thing I wanted to show you in this video is how I've created my own personal uh, timeline because how I use Asana is a little bit different. Um, as you see in my personal account, I actually don't use a lot of projects. Like I have here in my demo, I've got a lot of projects for each project I'm doing is a project in Asana. In my own personal account, I actually don't use many Asana projects. A lot of my actual projects I set up as tasks with subtasks. Um, and there's pros and cons of doing that, but that's just the way I've kind of been doing it for years. But what I've done is I've actually created this, um, what I call a summary or a reference project. 
And I call it a summary project because this itself, the timeline, is not really a project. The timeline contains tasks from other projects. So an example here is um, I'm updating my personal productivity toolkit soon. So this task really is kind of like a project. And you can see all the subtasks here for the things that I need to do for planning and, and producing all the slides and the videos and things. And so that task, it lives in this sales project. And sales isn't really a project. It's more just an area of work, but I've set it up as a project in Asana. And I've also multi-homed this task into this timeline. And so the purpose of this timeline is it's kind of like a weekly or monthly view that I've created specific for me. Uh, so um, rather than having multiple projects, like in the demo account here, multiple projects with each one has its own separate timeline. What I'm kind of doing in my own account is I'm multi-homing multiple tasks from different projects into one master timeline view. And so I've got this task related to updating my branding, um, a YouTube ad campaign, updating my toolkit, and various other things in here. And so this is a nice view that I spend a bit of time in because I can see what do I have coming up this week, over the rest of the month, or basically out you know, the next couple of months. It's sort of that medium term, medium to long term view for me, really. And so um, if you wanted to set up something like this for yourself, it's really just a case of setting up a separate project. And then I've indexed tasks from um, multiple projects into here. This is one of the unique features of Asana, really. You simply do that by, um, as you can see with this one, if I hover my mouse on the task here, if I click that plus button, I can add the task to a second project like, uh, let's say, clients here. And so that's just a slightly different way rather than using the goals, the portfolios, the timeline and so on. Um, it's kind of the more traditional way of using Asana. This is something a little bit more unique to me, but I've shown this to a number of my clients as well. I think it's just one other way that you can do some of that long term planning in Asana. But really, the key takeaway is I really hope that this video has been useful in terms of helping you to understand the different ways of using Asana to do that sort of short, medium to long term planning, depending on what it is that you uh, need to do. As I said at the start, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.